Hello, good afternoon or good morning, whatever time you are reading or watching this PowerPoint presentation. I hope that you have learned already in the past uh, the uh, base from the uploaded uh, first segment of our PowerPoint presentation, although I have already given some of them in your USB, but uh, this will be a supplemental to your modules and also to your uh, first uh, video uh, presentation. So in case address also, if uh, uh, they are not able to obtain this, you can share with them uh, once you have uh, um, downloaded already in your uh, or, or your USB or in your cell phone. So one of the most important topic that uh, we need to know about photography is light. Remember in my first discussion that uh, light is one of the elements of photography. Without uh, light, there will be no photography. So what are those things you need to know? Um, uh, basically, th there are two sources of light. We have the, the artificial. So this is the artificial and the natural so of course when we say artificial how will we define that is when it is human made and artif natural is when god created them so if you believe in god that's how you define it but to me since i believe in god then i would say that's how i will define it but both of this natural and artificial are being used in photography and they are both also useful and important so uh, in the absence of one, you can choose. You can use uh, the other one, but that's not my important concern. My concern is uh, when we talk about light, there are actually what we call as condition of light. So when we see condition, refers to what does uh, light looks like whenever you arrive in the crime scene. Um, there are many parts of your camera that you need to adjust, like the ISO, the shutter speed, and the F number. And one of the bases in adjusting that is the condition of light, which means to say that uh, the moment you arrive in your crime scene, one of the things you should put in mind, aside from attending to the needs of the victim, is to look at around you and see what is the light condition. Is it hazy? Is it dull? Or is it bright? As I've said, uh, that is because uh, that is your basis in adjusting three uh, important features in your camera. So the first uh, condition is called hazy. So hazy is defined as a condition of light uh, with a transparent shadow. So our basis in determining the condition of light is simply look at the shadow. So if the shadow is transparent, like, like the one you see in your screen, then that is what we call as hazy. And the other condition of light is dull. During nighttime, you don't have shadow. So how would we define it? When there is no shadow. Then another one is bright condition of light. When there is a strong shadow, then that is what we call as bright. So again, uh, these three con uh, condition of light are basis also of adjusting um, three features in your camera. Remember that what we are aftering for is the quality of photograph, not the quantity, not how many photographs you will take, but the quality, because the quality photograph is the basis of the court in accepting it as an evidence. So how will you make it quality one? Um, one is you adjust the ISO, the if number, and the shutter speed. What are your basis? These three. The hazy, the bright, the dull condition of light. So take note of that. And then another thing that I would like you to understand in as far as the light is concerned is called electromagnetic spectrum. Or in short, we call it spectrum. Um, when we say the spectrum, these are actually group of rays of light. What does it mean? Uh, just imagine, or may, let's make an analogy. When you put flowers together, how do you call it? 
what do we call it? We call it bouquet. When fish goes together, we call them fish. When mountains are grouped together, we call them ranges. Uh, <clears throat> when people are gathered together, we call them crowd. So rays of the sun are many. The, when the um, sun shines from the east, uh, it emits several rays of light actually. And what are those rays? We have the radio waves, we have the microwave, the the uh, infrared, ultraviolet, X-ray, gamma rays, the white light or the visible light. And uh, there are many of them. So if you put them as one, then that is what we call as electromagnetic spectrum. It simply means group of rays of light. And uh, how would you are going to understand that better? So this is it. This is another illustration. And you have here the gamma rays, X rays, ultra infrared radio waves, and all of these are useful in our life and also in photography. So we do not, we cannot be able to watch TV if there is no radio waves. We cannot watch internet too if there is no radio waves. Uh, if we want to see invisible objects, we use this too. If we want to see internal parts of the body, we use this. And likewise with this. But the common uh, ray of light we are using is this, the, invis the visible ray or visible light or known as white light. So the white light is not only one, it also composed of Roy GV, the eight colors. So this is what we are using every time we use our camera, be it cell phone or the uh, single lens reflex camera. All right, so uh, that's what we call as uh, spectrum. And then another term is wavelength. So what is wavelength? Okay, the, the light, if this is the sun, uh, this is the sun. When light rays comes here, it doesn't move straight. Instead, the light moves like this. So it moves like this. Right? It moves like this. And the scientist was able to, to uh, measure the distance between one crest. We call it one crest here. One crest to another crest they are able to measure the distance all right and let me tell you that distance uh, is not one kilometer it's one million of one millionth of a meter so meaning not even one centimeter it's shorter than one centimeter so it's very very close distance but the scientist was able to measure that and uh, <clears throat> that's how light travels it's like this. So the distance from one crest to another crest is called wavelength. This is another illustration. So we have what we call as amplitude, refers to the height, and then one hole like that, a complete wave like that is called frequency. Okay, then uh, another important thing we need to know also in as far as light is concerned is behavior of light. So we have condition of light and we also have behavior of light. Uh, when we say behavior of light, it's also known as characteristics, how light acts or how light behave. Now to give you another illustration, this is the sun. and when rays comes from the sun and emits its rays continuously to the water, the, wa the, the light rays do not move straight, right? Instead, it moves like this. When it reaches the water because of its density, it does not uh, go straight. Instead, it refract like this. It refract or it curb, right? And as a consequence of that, because it's curving, so what happened is, what will happen is, uh, 
what you see in your eyes when you try to see fish underwater is it seems it's here but the actual location is here so the light uh, is the one responsible for this uh, state so why is it like that because the light cannot move straight so that is one characteristics we call that one as refraction all right that is refraction in camera also refraction occurs uh, the different characteristics of light is actually occurring inside of our lenses that is why we are talking about it <clears throat> then another behavior of light is uh, called interference so interference occurs when this source of light emits its light going there and another source of light emits also its light over there so they interfere somewhere here that's why it's called interference behavior then uh, <coughs> okay next behavior is transmission so transmission so meaning it goes to the it goes to the other side so this is the glass and then the light rays from here went to the other side that is what we call as transmission so uh, if that is the source of light then the light pass through but after passing through it produces more rays then we call that one as translucent transmission this occurs when 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 this medium when you say medium it could be a glass is broken or when it is rough so it produces several rays that's why we that's what we call as translucent okay another one which is the opposite of translucent so example that is the source of light and then uh, it's the ray of light and there is a medium glass then when it went through there's only one ray of light we call it as transparent transmission right okay so another behavior of light we have example the source of light and ray emits on a medium another probably a glass and then it's like that there and then it reflects so we call it reflection but there are two kinds of reflections too so we have specular reflection this is already an example of specular reflection one ray hits the glass and then reflect only one ray that's uh, specular another uh, kind of uh, reflection is called <coughs> diffuse reflection so how does it work or what is it look like so it's like that ray of light hits the medium produces three reflections so we call that as diffuse reflection so very easy isn't it okay then that's the difference so you can see here specular reflection one single ray only one ray is reflected diffuse reflection one ray produces different rays in different direction that's the difference okay, another is diffraction so diffraction occurs when the medium for example this one is the edge of a table that is reflectorized or glass and then what happens is the, the ray of light hits that table and then uh, reflect some rays are reflected some are transmitted okay so we call that as diffraction another thing that you need to know also uh, so we are already done with light that's the the uh, other um, uh, element of light I mean element of photography and 
uh, one of the important uh, part of the uh, camera is lens. So lens is the one responsible in bringing image to the sensor. Imagine, uh, have you not wonder how is it possible that you are 5 4 in height and then your image was able to enter in your very tiny camera or tiny cell phone camera it's amazing isn't it that is because of the job of the lens okay so the ray of light carries the image but what makes it uh, uh, fit in your camera is the lens lens is the most expensive part of the camera um, yeah when you buy worth 40,000 camera that is because of its lens now there are different types of lenses according to shape uh, we have the convex lens the convex lens is this remember and look at the image thicker in the center and thinner at the edges while concave lens thicker at the edges and thinner at the center this this one the uh, the convex lens is capable of producing an image it can bring image to the sensor while uh, while the concave is incapable of bringing image to the sensor that's why they call this one as negative lens but uh, in, in a camera we are using both of these because they complement each other meaning they help each other this one has shortcomings as well as this one but if you put them together they are like perfect it's like husband and wife so that is how it works then uh, illustration for how does uh, the the uh, concave lens works so when rays of light passes through they will diverge pass through they will diverge they will go different direction that's why we call this lens as diverging lens uh, lens or concave lens or otherwise known also as negative lens So this is how they work. So for example, the concave convex lens has imperfectness. It's not perfect. Uh, but if you combine it with this, they become perfect. So I will discuss later on how this works. Another illustration, how do they work? So you can see that the convex lens is also known as convergent lens when rays of light passes through it they will converge in one point here they will converge that's why it is called converging lens while this one when it passes through it went up and went down they separate so they call it diverging lens okay inside of a digital camera this is how light looks like you can see here that there is a reversion of the uh, light uh, that is because the light passes through here the light passes through here will refract they will curve and so you will notice that the green color of light here on top went below or at the bottom when it enters in the sensor so this is the sensor this is where your image is being captured and being recorded right so here 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 so that is where we find our sensor and you will notice also here that uh, there are <coughs> several lenses used so alternately the concave and convex are used in this part if you notice there are so many that's why that kind of lens is expensive um, for other ordinary camera like our cell phone camera uses only a concave and convex lens so they are just combined and then the rest why the defects are fixed uh, because it is being fixed already here electronically by an artificial intelligence 
but for a camera like this that doesn't have so much apps installed in it then this is really working for them okay then uh, uh, lens also are categorized by angle view so we call it types of lens according to angle view when we say angle view it refers to how wide or how narrow the lens can see for us human our eyes are also limited it has also an angle view uh, when you focus your eye straight there are there are uh, you cannot see side word you cannot see the side because what we can only see is 45 to 60 degrees angle view that's how uh, what's the range of how human eyes can see lens is also like that it has also uh, limited range and they have a very specific use especially in law enforcement for example the wide angle view lens it has uh, more than 60 angle view here more than 60 angle view <clears throat> it's wide actually uh, we cannot already see uh, some of it if we use our eyes now uh, remember more than 60 degrees angle view so where can we use this these are very useful in some crime scenes like for example if your scene is very wide where evidences are scattered or the area is scrum where you wanted to photograph the whole view in one shot an evidence in one corner and another is in one corner and you want to photograph them in one viewing because uh, the judge usually demands a picture of that then wide angle lens is wide angle lens is appropriate but if your subject is very far then there is a corresponding lens for that we call it telephoto lens telephoto lens uh, from the word tele means far and then photo means light so you can view subject from a far distance so it's very effective in some uh, scene like fire, fire scene where you cannot go near or for intelligence gathering and also um, the problem however is telephoto lens has a narrow angle view because it can only see less than 45 degrees it's so narrow because it's really for far distance subject so uh, that is telephoto lens based on angle view then another type of lens is we have normal lens normal lens because it is the same as our human eye uh, our eyes as i've said a while ago can only see 45 to 60 degrees angle view and then uh, so whenever you buy cell phone today cell phone camera or the single lens reflex any ordinary camera it is already set on or default on uh, normal angle lens so that's the comparison as you can see it's uh, the, the, the angle view is limited while this one is very wide there's a difference between normal and the wide angle view and then <clears throat> Race it already. Okay, so those are the different types of lens according to angle view. Now, another thing that uh, I wanted you to know, okay, just follow me. Look at this for example, that is your subject. By the way, in photography, when we say subject, this is the subject, the one that you are going to picture. So imagine that this is. Uh, this is your camera right that's your film before but today this is called sensor for digital camera this is called sensor or electronic sensor okay so that's your camera now how do we call that I remember I told you that when light rays comes from the subject passes through the lens they will refract like that right and from here they will refract and then you will notice that the lights will the light rays inside of the camera meet somewhere else they meet somewhere else in here so how do you call that we call it as focal 
meeting place of race once they pass through lens okay another one so we call that part pointed by arrow as focal plane and how about the distance distance between the center of the lens we call this center of the lens and the focal plane so how do you call that let me erase first so we have here the center of the lens and that focal plane if you measure that we call it focal length focal length now what is the importance of that focal focal length okay let me explain so focal length is the distance isn't it but you can change that so for example this is the focal length let me draw another one here so it's the focal length and you can actually move this closer here so for example that's the center you can make the center adjust here so the distance is already short so if you adjust that you actually just actually zoom in your camera when you move it closer what will happen to your subject the subject might change in terms of size and angle view so short distance produce a uh, smaller subject so the size of this becomes smaller but wider in scope while if you move the center of the lens away from the focal plane long focal length long focal length then the subject becomes large become large okay, but narrower already in angle view please remember that okay so that's another illustration of focal length distance of the sensor to the center of the lens and then uh, okay another thing is what we call as depth of field depth of field listen to this refers to area in the subject that appears to be in focus or clear you will notice that this portion is blurred this portion is clear so the portion that is clear is called depth of field so that really happens and the reason for that is maybe your cell phone has or cell phone camera or camera has a defect or you have adjusted your uh, your uh, uh, f number or your focal length so it also changes the depth of field but remember the field is area that appears to be clear or in focus okay so another example of the field is still in the center and in the side but some depth of field okay let me look some more so you see that the depth of field is in the center okay but other deep of field you can be in the background or in front so this could be clear you can do that and this may be this portion can be blurred or you can make this front bl uh, clear and make the background blurred so the clear area is called depth of field what else <coughs> okay so another thing that we need to talk about uh, lens is called aberration aberration refers to a defect so not all lens are perfect there is no such thing as lens i mean perfect lens there is always what we call as inherent defect when we say inherent these are innate natural or inborn defect the moment they are manufactured in the company this defect is already there uh, it's not actually a defect but it is by nature it's by nature of the lens you will understand how it really works later so what are the defects of lenses okay one first one is called spherical aberration spherical aberration happens when rays of light this ray of light passes a spherical shape of lens you know lens is always spherical 
and concave. There is no such thing as circular lens. So it's spherical. You, know, you cannot uh, in reinvent that. Like wheels, you cannot make a flat wheels. It's always round. So um, lens is also like that. And because it is spherical, there is a natural uh, effect which cannot be changed unless you change the size of the or the shape of the the lens. So what will happen here? When rays of light passes through here, they will refract and it passes through here, they will refract. If you compare to, to the rays passing at the center, they don't refract much, they don't curve much. So you will notice now that there are already two, two focal points. So that's the effect. <clears throat> if there are two focal points, the result of that is blurredness of photograph. So let me show you the effect. So remember, a spherical aberration results to blurredness. <clears throat> this is it. This is the result of the spherical aberration. You will see clear here, blurred in here. And then another result of spherical aberration. Now, how, how will they fix that? How did they fix that? Why is it that we don't see so much kind of, so much uh, lens defect like that today? Uh, because our companies, the companies producing camera combine convex and concave lens. As you can see here, uh, they already combine convex and concave. So this is the, this one is the uh, lens uh, aberration defect, spherical aberration, you will notice that there are uh, <coughs> different uh, different uh, focal point in, in, the, in here <coughs> in here so you will notice that supposed to be this rays of light will go there, right? but because of the presence of the concave lens the rays went there so so when supposed to be there but because of that it went here so there is already only one focal point instead of that one and that one so the concave fixed the problem of the convex lens Likewise, I mean, another uh, another defect of lens is called chromatic aberration. Chromatic aberration is uh, also in, by nature. You know, when light passes through lens, when white light passes through lens, uh, there is actually a lot of color of light, roid vib color. And these colors passing through here, have different speed because remember 400 to 700 millimicrons uh, so we don't go into the same the direction the same focal point uh, the degree the red color uh, because of its speed that it will go here and the violet comes here so uh, that's why there is a color defect which is called chromatic aberration so this is the example oh no this is another illustration so the blue is here the green is here and the red is here so three focal point so the result is like that so i want you to observe this portion there is reddish color in here then reddish color here reddish color reddish color and there so those are because of chromatic that is what we call as chromatic aberration okay then another example yeah that's one and it kind of came from here so how to fix that the same with the spherical aberration simply add proper uh, concave lens then the rays of light will have single focal point Another defect is called coma, coma aberration. Coma aberration occurs when rays of light enters obliquely, as you can see in the illustration, 
the light coming from a different direction and it's hard for the, the lens to fix it and so you will see comet formation or pierce formation in your photograph oh, so it's like this there is it enters there the oblique leak slide came from here and you will see pot something like this either on the side of your photograph in the middle or in the bottom another defect is called astigmatism uh, occurs when you can no longer see across as cross it looks like this it's like curve and another defect is uh, distortion distortion shows a defect like this there are two kinds of distortion barrel distortion and pencussion distortion so the illustration is when you see that a straight pose or a straight building for example at the edge curb outward like outward like this it's called barrel when the curving of the straight pose or building is curving outward we call it pincushion and then this is another illustration you will see that the image bow outward this is barrel distortion and then another illustration of astigmatism you will see here the one suffering from astigmatism right is when uh, the rays of light enter in the eyes of human you know uh, lens is patterned from human eyes it's exactly the same as human eyes so they function like that so if the light rays enter here in the eyes and it has a problem the eyes has problem then the rays of light will go to different focal point there is also what we call a sensor here of our eyes and if it goes to different direction the brain cannot read it well because it has two focal points so what will happen is it results to blurredness how to correct it so you will see that there is a correction here so for example doctor recommends you to use eyeglasses so the eyeglasses will fix the light first before it reaches the focal point so that there is only one focal point it is similar to lenses then that's the effect of the the astigmatism astigmatism defect corrected one uncorrected okay so another thing that i think is important also for you is what we call as f number or aperture so let me clarify this inside inside of this lens there is a small hole and the small hole is called aperture now the size of the uh, hole is called f number so the hole itself is aperture and the name of the size is f number that's why we have 1.4 to uh, 22 we call this f22 f1.4 f2 so whenever you see this imagine referring only to the hole inside of the lens it's where the light enters right is the light enters and uh, you will see that uh, it has different shape this one is wider while that one is, is smaller so this is just used to control the amount of light entering in a camera which is called lens speed so it regulates the amount of light entering in your camera we call it lens speed so it doesn't refer to how fast your lens move but it refers to how much amount of light your camera can absorb and it varies uh, depending on the condition of light so for example if your subject is in a dull condition of uh, dull condition of light is so dark then you will use this because you need to let uh, more amount of light to enter otherwise your your image will be underexposed so it's going to be dark while if your subject is in a bright lunch time and it's so sunny then you use this so that even if you allow a small amount of light to enter but since it is strong then it is still enough 
to show the image that you wanted to see so uh, that's the use isn't it uh, and then take note the smaller the number 1.4 the wider the size the bigger the number the smaller the size that is how it works so the highest is the, the highest number is the smallest size so it varies it depends on what lens you are using uh, but sometimes the highest is 32 or 36 right we call it as f number this depends on the condition of light so you can adjust that okay. then uh, another illustration so you can see here the lowest number and uh, highest number is the smallest what else okay so this will illustrate further how does f number works so for example uh, low f number so meaning 2.8 so this is what you will see 2.8 is the widest and it, it's wide it's very wide uh, lens opening so it's bright because you allow light to enter more light to enter uh, this shutter speed we will talk about this one later on I will still go back to this discussion but as of the moment what I wanted you to see is how does f number works while here you will notice that it's a little darker it's high number meaning high number like f32 if you use that then you will have a little darker image because you allow only a small amount of light to enter because you make your hole so small so what do you expect it's dark so that is how it works and then last illustration uh, you see here it's very wide so this is the result you will see that there are changes that take place here it's so narrow already so narrow it's very wide but you will see that your angle view is uh, that has changed meaning uh, it's bright but it's narrow well here uh, less light you allow less light to enter and so it is a little darker this is in a bright condition of light so you will notice that which one among these photos uh, is far better mm. so this could be one and this one but you will notice that the when you change also this one this size there are two things that will happen one is the brightness second is the angle view also change so this number here you can no longer see here it's already visible so for the meantime i will end here the session it's already 40 minutes and it's hard to upload a very high bytes of uh, a video clip so i hope this has helped you please uh, encourage your classmates to to watch them it's, in, it's not enough really to use your modules so please let us help each other you need this one not only for your exam in the final but you need this one uh, when you, you go to your career or even in your life you will be needing this so let us help each other so i will still have two more or more than two more two or i don't know how many segment i will still work before the final so uh, i hope that you are adjusting and if ever you have problem to with your class let us know